Well, hello there everyone and welcome to a new video over here on Anton's Hardware Channel. Today we're going to talk about these two and it's a G5 and a G6 external sound cards made by Creative and I'm wondering just how good are these sound cards? Let's find out in this video. So, two sound cards. One of them is, I have to check, 150 euros. The other one is 100 euros. Uh, they look extremely similar on the outside, but on the inside it's a different story because their components used are, well, very different. But, but before we go over to the specifications, I just want to say, well, I am a, not much of a fan of external sound cards and not because um, there's any foundation for that. I just don't think that external sound cards can ever be good sound cards uh, as opposed to internal sound cards. And that's just something in my head. So when I got these external sound cards, I was, well, apprehensive to say the least to start testing the scrap because I believe, well, they'll suck anyway. So why even bother to review them? But at the end of this video, you will see that I may have changed my opinion about that. But before we go over there, let's get over to the specifications and see what's inside of these external sound cards. So on the outside, they look very similar, as you can see. On the left, it's the G5 and on the right, it's the G6. Now, if you look at the front panel, for so far you can say front panel, on the left you can put in your headset and on the right your microphone. The large knob is of course for the volume. Now if you look at the sides, now all the buttons are in the same place, uh, be it that the G6 has the Dolby Audio logo, there all the buttons are the same. On the back side, the G5 has an extra USB input, whereas the G6 doesn't have that. They both have the line or optical in or the line optical out. Now, if you look at the sides of these sound cards, this is what they look like and they look identical. On the inside, it's a different story. First, let's take a look at the signal to noise ratio. Now, when we look at the box of the G5, it says 120 decibels. Now, that's an impressive number. The G6 is even more impressive. That's 130 decibels. Now, I do not have a sound card that almost, well, there are some that are 120 decibels. Uh, none of them are 120 decibel, decibels. So I don't think that that number is correct and it's more marketing. Both of them use the SBAXX1 audio processor, which is a multi-core floating point processor. I cannot find any more information about this audio processor, but I expect it to be a risk-based processor, but that's just a guess. The other specifications. The G5 has the C Media 4398 digital to analog converter. This is the same digital analog converter that is used in the Asus Xoner DX and the Creative Sound Blaster Z. The G6 uses the CS4000 or 43131, difficult number, digital to analog converter. And this is sort of a new kit on the block in my opinion, because there I don't have any sound card that use that one. It's in the newer Master Hi-Fi range from Cirrus Logic. It's, well, it's the 130 decibels, 32 bits. That's interesting to see high performance digital to analog converter with an integrated headphone driver and impedance detection. The amplifiers that are used is the TPA 6120A2 in the G5. And this one is also used in the Asus Xonar Essence ST, Asus Xonar Phoebe Solo, and Asus Strix Raid Pro which are all nice and decent sound cards. Now the amp in the G6 is an X amp, which is a channel discrete amplifier, which means that both the left and the right channel have both separate and dedicated amplifiers. And that should improve audio quality. Now this amp is also used in the Sound Blaster AE5, a card that I found to be one of the best cards I have. Now, I haven't used Rightmark Audio Analyzer in 
any of my previous videos. And the reason for that is, well, Rightmark Audio Analyzer, what it does, it's it, its output puts out the signal and in the back the line in converts the signal back to a digital and the difference between them is measured. So when you use Rightmark Audio Analyzer, you are actually measuring both the digital to analog converter and the analog to digital converter. So if your sound card has a very bad analog to digital converter, but a really good digital to analog converter, you will still get, well, not so good results. And this is what sometimes happens. You can also use a dedicated calibrated sound card with a really good analog to digital converter. And so that one, uh, that variable is eliminated. But And first up, it's the Realtek ALC662 or 662. Now the frequency response, I look at the graph at the bottom, uh, it's supposed to be flat. Uh, everything is up, supposed to be at the zero line. Now you see uh, the bass is on the left is a bit low and on the right it starts to wobble a bit. Now for this kind of sound card, a equalizer or an equalizer should be really interesting because you can pump up the bass a bit more and maybe get some, um, what, some better sounds in the higher echelons. If we switch over to a really expensive sound card like the EVGA NU, you will see these kind of results. Now you can see an almost flat line and after 20,000 or 20K, it starts to drop down and even a bit further after 50. Now you will not hear any sound. There's a lot of discussion about it, but in my opinion, you cannot hear any sounds above 20, 22,000 Hertz. So it's okay that it drops down after that, but still it's a really flat line. And this is what you want to have. This is what happens when I, well, start an analyze, uh, to, to analyze the sound quality of the G5. You can see it's, all over the place. And as the, in the summary it says, the frequency response is really poor. Uh, the overall rating of this sound card, it says it's very good, but if you see this, it's really bad. It's If you listen to this on an, a headset, uh, it will be very uncomfortable. It will be, well, sort of, it, no, not even sort of, it will start to hear uh, hurt your ears. And that's what happened to me after about what, half an hour, uh, three quarters of an hour, it started to hurt my ears and I stopped listening to it. There's no way that an uh, equalizer could, well, make this any flatter or even better. So uh, the measurements of this sound card is really bad. Now, if it's down to the analog to digital converter, or it's the digital to analog converter that's really bad, or both, I do not know. Uh, in my opinion, what I can hear when listening to songs, the quality is very poor. When we switch over to the G6, you see something very different. It's almost a flat line and starts to drop at 20,000 Hertz. It's something which, in my opinion, is kind of okay to see. It, the line is almost flat. It's not completely flat, but it does a nice job. I have seen a lot worse, like in the G5. Now, this is the driver interface for the Sound Blaster X G5. For the G6, there's another driver interface. You have to use a completely different driver and those aren't compatible with each other. So if you have a G5 at this moment and I'm going to buy G6, you have to uninstall the G5 software and reinstall or install the G6 software. Now, here you have a profile, acoustics engine, equalizer, scout mode, voice effects, and advanced settings. Now, I always use the direct uh, mode just because I don't want to hear have any of those other settings enabled. I don't know why they're there. Uh, maybe some people would like to have some more bass or smart volume. It may be interesting, but in my opinion, it, it only corrupts the sound and it doesn't make it better. Now, let's head over to the G6 or, uh, driver interface. Now, this is what the driver interface looks like for the G6. Now you can see the differences with the G5 because this one is a lot more complex and has a lot more settings. On the left you have the dashboard, a sound settings with the filters, which is this one is in, it's still half in Dutch. It says a fast roll off linear phase. Here you also have a Dolby uh, decoder, which is interesting to see because a lot of viewers have been asking me which sound card supports Dolby. Well, this one does. Also have the scout mode equalizer and of course an acoustics engine now let's head over to the voice here you also have all different kind of settings which you can use um, 
I don't use them generally, so I just go to direct mode, which I'll show you in a second. Of course, lighting and the one that's, well, in my opinion, the most cool is the cycle and it looks something like this. That's all very nice to see those specifications on all those numbers, but what it boils down to is how do these sound cards sound? Well, when I started to listen to the G5, I turned it off after about 45 to one hour. Why? Well, it started to hurt my ears. The sound was really bad. Uh, it was all over the place. The, the, it was cramped. It was uh, st struggling just to get some sound out there. Uh, it was just not a nice hearing experience. It just didn't matter if I played some songs from Spotify or uh, Flag songs. It didn't matter if I played games with it. It just was a bad sound experience. And there's no other way to put it. It's just a bad sound card. When I go over to the G6, I was even more apprehensive because, well, the G5 is, as I said before, it, well, it underlined my opinion that external sound cards are bad. But then I started listening to the G6 and I was well, happily amazed. The sound was really nice to listen to. It was calm. Uh, there was no effort to well, pump out any sounds. It was all crisp, it was clear. And bear in mind that this is all done with direct mode. So there were no uh, equalizers or bass boosts or whatever turned on. It was just, just a direct mode on both devices. And it, the G6 was a nice listening experience. The sound was really good. Now I have heard from some friends that they had some issues who had this sound card with the, the some issues with this sound card when trying to apply changes in the driver interface. Now I haven't experienced any of those issues with the driver interface. Um, I'm not really sure why that was or why that happened with my friends, but it did happen. Uh, but I didn't find any of it. But again, the sound quality of the G6 is really nice to hear. So will I recommend any of these sound cards? Now you may have already guessed that the G5 I will definitely not recommend. The sound quality was really poor. There was a mismatch in the volume. Uh, the right channel was a lot louder than the left so I had to wiggle around with the balance and well that just says to me that the sound card itself isn't any good. Now the G6 which is this one is a good sound card. Uh, even though it's 150 euros, I still think, well, it's if you really want want to have an external sound card like you have a laptop, I would definitely recommend for this one because the sound quality is really good. Nearly as good as an AE5, also by Creative, not as good as an EVGA NU, but it, well, it's it's in the same league as those, those ones. Now the G5, I really don't understand why you would even consider paying 100 euros for this sound card. Because, because of its really poor performance. So that's it for me for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please leave a like, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video, which is about this one. See you then, bye bye.